The term supply chain management has become a very hot topic over the past decade, especially in the manufacturing sector. To trace the origins of supply chain management, let us go back in time a hundred years. Consider automobile manufacturing companies way back when and how their value chains were handled. Starting with raw steel, the automobile companies made the car frames, engines, bodies, and practically every little part that went into the car. The companies also wanted to own their own transportation fleets, networks of retail outlets, and service centers. Had it been feasible, the companies would have even liked to have produced their own steel and their own rubber for the tires, etc. It was good practice to have a high level of vertical integration. Over the years, however, these companies realized that their expertise lay in designing and producing cars, not in the other miscellaneous activities. Hey, here's an idea. Company X is better at making seats than we are, so how about we get them to make the seats? Meanwhile, we can do more of what we are good at. Looking at this make or buy decision, the company decides to outsource the seat making activity to company X. Likewise, company Y is better at making headlights. Company Z is better at making speedometers. And so on. When we say company X is better than us at making seats, we can think in terms of lower costs of production, of course. Another important factor is also the centrality of the activity, or whether it is a core activity. If the activity is not directly related to designing and producing cars, or doesn't give us a competitive advantage, then perhaps someone else should be doing it. Progressively, more and more of the non-core items in an automobile have come to be made by supplier companies. Nowadays, most automobile companies concentrate on making a few core parts, such as engines, and assembling the car from parts made by a range of suppliers. Thus, sourcing supplies from a network of suppliers has become more and more important. Often, it is not unusual for upwards of 70% of the cost of a manufactured product to be purchased from suppliers. A typical manufacturing supply chain is made up of several layers. On the downstream side, the supply chain extends down to the distribution centers and various retail outlets. On the upstream side, we buy from several major suppliers who form our tier one suppliers. These suppliers in turn source their supplies from tier two suppliers who in turn buy from tier 3 suppliers, and so on. In some cases, such as in an aerospace supply chain, it is easy to run into 7 or 8 tiers of suppliers. This concept of make or buy applies not just to manufacturing companies. Let us say I am running a little store. I put all my bills and receipts into a shoebox and take them to my accountant for doing the taxes. One reason for that may be that I lack the skills necessary or cannot do a good quality job. But even if I could do the taxes myself, the effort is going to take several hours or even days out of my life. Meanwhile, who is going to mind the store? So I concentrate on what I'm good at and outsource the tax preparation activity to my friendly neighborhood CPA. In addition to accounting services, I outsource my facility itself by renting rather than owning my store. I outsource my HR services to a temp agency. I even outsource my know-how by franchising it from someone else who has done all the homework. Likewise, I also outsource my maintenance services, cleaning services, trucking and delivery services, courier services, security services, communication services, etc. Finally, can I forget the suppliers of the goods that are on my store shelves? 
even though a typical service company's supply chain may not be as complex as a manufacturing company's chain, it is easy to see that the trend towards greater complexity is already well on its way. Do we not hear the term outsourcing in the service sector also? It's not just IT services that are being outsourced, but all sorts of business processes, especially back-end processes. The job of dealing with suppliers has typically fallen to a functional area called purchasing. Consider the role of purchasing as it was a couple of decades ago, and even now is in many companies. I need some pencils to do my work, so I contact our company's purchasing guy, John. John immediately gets to work contacting potential suppliers. He comes back to me with a whole bunch of quotes with several different options, detailed specifications, and pricing, etc. I look through all this and zero in on one particular brand and supplier. John then proceeds to finalize the terms and work with the supplier to arrange the delivery. The truck arrives at the loading dock, but the driver won't unload the truck without payment. Someone call John, please. John contacts the accounting people to release the check. But they won't sign off until the quality control inspector has okayed the shipment. John contacts the quality control inspector. Then he contacts the warehouse personnel to put the pencils away. Now, although I'm the one who ordered the pencils, I am clueless as to all the things John is doing to get me the pencils. I just look up one day and the pencils magically appear. John is a really handy guy around here, don't you think? Let's all give him a round of applause. With the applause out of the way, if we really analyze John's role, it does seem to be a somewhat clerical function. In keeping with that, we didn't hire John to be the most highly qualified person in our company, nor did we give him a very high level position either. No offense, John, but I'm not sure we want to give you another promotion yet. We've already given you the title of purchasing manager just to make you happy. Isn't that enough? Now, instead of pencils, let us say John is engaged in sourcing an important technical component for our latest Hush Hush new product. He is in negotiations with a team from our supplier. The supplier's team includes their marketing people, who have dual master's degrees in engineering and marketing. They are a slick bunch. They can run 10 circles around John if he so much as blinks an eyelid. I've given John some duct tape to tape his eyes open. Let's hope it works. What do you think is going to happen in that round of negotiations? Do you think John will come out with mud on his face? No, it's not John who has mud on his face. It's our company. Now let's amplify this situation several fold. For every dollar's worth of products that our company is producing, we are purchasing 70 cents worth from outside suppliers. And here is John handling our purchasing activity. Is that the most wise method for us to spend 70% of our dollars? A recognition of the importance of the supply management function and the magnitude of the dollars it handles has led to raising the function from a low level clerical activity to a high level strategic activity. Rather than just purchasing or purchasing and materials management or purchasing and logistics, supply chain management encompasses all of the above and more. It involves coordination of our suppliers across several tiers. It involves coordinating our logistics, transportation and distribution lines along with our marketing folks. It involves coordinating our suppliers into our new product development process along with our R&D folks. It involves coordinating the materials flow along with our production folks, and so on. It is indeed a very strategic activity. John, you still there? We are promoting you to VP Supply Chain Management. 